Hi, I'm going to walk you through uh, how to do data extraction for meta-analyses. We're going to do this in three steps. The first step, we're just going to talk about how to identify and locate the outcomes that you're interested in. So here's the deal. When you're extracting data from an article for a uh, systematic review or meta-analysis, you need to capture certain pieces of information, design characteristics, you need to define your arms or comparison groups, you need to identify the intervention exposure characteristics, these are sometimes called arms details, then we need to look at outcomes of interest and how they're measured, and then finally we need to get the actual results, that is the measures of the outcome variables. Now, Obviously, in this uh, video, we're interested in the outcomes of interest. That's why they're bolded. And so, here's the deal. In almost every article you read, they're going to have a ton of different outcomes. You know, authors don't publish generally on one outcome. You know, why, why waste all the time? You want to focus on a number. Well, here's the deal. For your purpose, you want to ignore a lot of the outcomes and focus only on the outcomes that are germane or relevant to your evidence analysis questions. So a lot of this is developing a skill in what to ignore as well as figuring out what you need to identify. And so here's the thing. Often outcomes feel like they're buried, okay? You're on one side of the article, your outcome is on the other, and you got to find your way through this. So let's talk about how to do that. So for clinical trials, outcomes are generally pretty clearly described in the text and tables of the results section. So if you look down there, you'll find it. And let me show you an example. So let's say that we are interested in the effectiveness of different treatments uh, for obesity in children. So here's an article, and what we're really wanting to know is how do our, has our treatment group and our control group compare. So we've got all the... Um, stuff at the top, you know, the intro, etc. We've got the participants and methods, and we draw on all of this to populate um, the or extract the data for our design, etc. interventions. But what we're really looking for right now is the outcomes. Well, we see that table one gives us the baseline measures, but that for both our lifestyle and our control group, but that don't really tell us well, you know, how does how do the what's the effectiveness? How do these things change? How do the uh, weight change or BMI change in these different groups? So we have to look down a little further, and we would find a lot of the de some of the detail in the narrative, but really in randomized control trials, they're very good about pulling out the differences in a table. And here you see our body mass index, and I've got my lifestyle and control group, and you can see I've got the measures at each time point, the mean and the standard deviation. I've also got my change uh, within groups, within a different time period, and that what's really nice is they've given me the between group differences. So very often you can find, if you can't find all of these pieces of information, you can at least find um, what you'll need in one of the tables of a randomized control trial. So also, sometimes you may not see exactly what you're looking for in the article, but you can find it in an online supplement. And let me show you an example of that. So here we have an article from the New England Journal of Medicine that is looking at the effectiveness of weight loss interventions, which is what we're interested in. But we're interested in, remember, the changes in BMI. So we scroll down here, go through all, like we would normally, and Table 3 looks like it probably gives us what we need. But if we look at Table 3, we find out that well, rather than report changes or differences in BMI, they're actually looking at proportions. Well, we're not so interested in proportions. But here's the thing. What they not did, is these authors, is they gave us a supplementary index, or appendix, I'm sorry, and so we can scroll down through here, and guess what? We find that, ah, they included a table that's going to present exactly the things that we need in terms of the uh, differences or the effectiveness of the different uh, interventions. For observational studies, these often contain a number of different analyses and models that you sometimes really have to dig through to find what you need. Let's look at a couple of examples on that one. Sometimes these outcomes are buried in a table. 
So here we have an article on sugar added beverages and adolescent weight change. And let's say that what we're really interested in is what's the relationship between the uh, number of fruit juice servings that uh, kids have in a particular time period and BMI outcomes. Well, here's the thing. Berkey and his colleagues, or I'm sorry, Berkey and her colleagues, um, report on a number of different outcomes. And so we, again, all the introduction, the methods, etc. Well, here we have table one, which is beverage serving intake per day, but here's at different age points, but they don't give you a relationship to BMI. So while all these numbers may be useful for some things and interesting for some things, they're not what we're interested in. So let's go on down. So how, here we have a cross-sectional uh, association of beverage intake and total energy at baseline. But we're interested in, say, the changes over time. Again, interesting, but not what we need. So we scroll on down, tables, cool, I mean figures, cool, not what we want. And finally, we get to our outcomes. And what we find is that out of all of these numbers, Really, we're only interested in all of in these uh, ones that are highlighted. So, what you find sometimes is that there's lots and lots of outcomes reported in a study, but you have to identify just the ones that you need. Sometimes you're only going to find the outcomes in a narrative. So let's say that what we're interested in for this question is the relationship between the expression of a particular gene, WT1, and relapse of uh, cancer relapse. So here we have an article that by Candoni that, and colleagues that uh, report tons and tons of different outcomes. We can scroll down, we read through all this, we understand it. Okay, we've got data on individual patients, but nothing yet that really gives us what we need. Well, as we look down here, again, graphs, etc., but it's not until we get further down that we're going to finally, <coughs> excuse me, find what we need. And it's in this one paragraph that the authors give us the information that we need to answer our question. It's, you're not going to find it anywhere in any of the tables. You just have to read and dig for it. But if you know what you're looking for, bingo, there it is. And sometimes you'll find the outcomes in both, but they aren't always the same. And let's go back to our question about the relationship between intake of fruit juice and BMI. So here we have an article by Mackey's and colleagues and we go down, let's say we've already lo uh, read through all this and we locate our outcomes in way on down in a table. Okay, and boom, here we have fruit juice and the relationship between overweight or obesity. So it's not exactly um, BMI, but let's say that, that we can use this to answer our question. But here's something important. The outcomes that are reported in the table are going to be slightly different than the outcomes, if you'll notice, that the authors report up in the text. And the reason is what they did in the text is they report the odds ratios, but after adjusting for confounders. Now, when we're gathering data, uh, data on outcomes, we want the outcomes that have been uh, analyzed after controlling for as many confounders as possible. So what we're interested in isn't really the data that we found in the table, but the data that we found in the narrative. So you have to carefully read both and identify, aha, here are the, the data that are going to be most helpful to me. Sometimes you find them in both, but always go for the ones that have been adjusted for the different confounders. So before you begin to extract your data, locate exactly what outcome you need and ignore the others. That doesn't mean you don't need to read the article. Certainly read it, get a deeper understanding, but find only what you need for the extraction. And given all the outcomes that are reported and can be reported, the question really comes down to, where is yours?